Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about borderline personality disorder and how it affects my friendships. Um, so for me, uh, I made a lot of mistakes in the past with different friendships and learning from my mistakes and learning from other people's mistakes about how to um, have healthy relationships um, and maintain friendships, especially so um, I have a lot of comorbid stuff going on. Um, I'll do my little intro. My name is Olivia. I am autistic. Uh, I have ADHD. I have OCD, BPD, uh, depression, anxiety, all that stuff. Um, and so maintaining friendships is hard for both people with borderline personality disorder and people with autism. So I'm kind of like fighting a battle almost. Um, and what I do is I have as open communication as possible with friends in my life about um, the fact that I struggle with friendships um, and I let them in on the fact that like I'm not gonna be sometimes like I an ADHD as well um, affects friendships um, and sometimes I like forget people exist if I'm not in frequent conversation conversation or contact with the person I will basically forget they exist and then it'll be like a month two months a couple months later and I'm like oh my gosh one we haven't talked or hung out in this long and hey how are you doing um so that can obviously if you have a friend who it needs a lot of frequent attention that can be bad um and another thing that affects my friendships, specifically with BPD um, and autism, is uh, hyperfixating on a person or having a favorite person. Um, right now, my favorite person or my FP is my best friend. And um, so she's a person where I... I've gotten to a place where I do now understand that I need my alone time. I'm an introvert and I finally understand that like as much as I want to hang out with people um, it drains me and I don't want to hang out with like a lot of different people. I like hanging out with my same small group. Um, so understanding that I need my alone time and other people need their alone time um, has really helped me not be so demanding on her uh, for all her attention and understanding that she's busy she works she has her family and like stuff to do um and I think just being able to have more supports in my life of other people that I can rely on when I am struggling uh really helps alleviate the pressure on her part um, because I know I've had someone like kindly express to me that it felt like they were the only thing keeping me alive um, and that's a lot for someone to handle and that's not a good position to put anyone in and I know people don't often do it intentionally um, but it doesn't help make it any less um, heavy it's just it can be it can be a lot thinking that you're um, the only thing that's keeping someone alive um, and so with that um, we've had to like the desire I have the desire to hang out with her a lot um, and see her and talk to her all the time and she's just had to set boundaries and say um, let's try not to excuse me let's try not to um, text a lot like during the daytime when I'm at work um, so when I do text you I can give you my full attention and have quality conversation instead of talking a lot but it being like not in depth um, and so that was one of the boundaries she set and hanging out we used to hang out like 
two times a week minimum um or more and she's like let's hang out once a week like I feel it's very um it's a lot to keep up social and hang out with other friends as well when she's hanging out with me two to three times a week or more um so we've limited our hangouts to once a week like scheduled once a week we'll see each other at least once a week uh, sometimes more if there's like a special event or something's going on it's not like we can't ever see each other multiple times a week it's just kind of um, giving her that space to get her stuff done um, and I'm trying to think of other boundaries that we have those are the two main ones but um, just knowing um, one of the boundaries she said is that she wants me to see my therapist more frequently. Um, she made a comment um, when I had relapsed a bit ago uh, that it felt like she couldn't be genuine with me all the time. Not that she ever felt angry towards me, but she felt that if she did get angry that it would cause me to relapse. And so she wanted me to see my therapist more frequently and have more other supports around. Um, so it wasn't just her that would f flip me off, like set me off. But yeah, um, so it can be hard to maintain friendships. But I think going into a friendship um, and letting them know, um, not like at the very beginning, uh, but early on, letting them know, this is my diagnosis, this is a little bit about this disorder, here's how it affects my friendships, here's what um, I'd like from you, and here's what I need you to expect from me. And just being clear, um, and having people that will keep you in check, um, and if you cross boundaries, they'll remind you, um, and things like that. It can just... It's possible to have positive friendships. It's just a little bit more difficult. Um, and finding the right people that will be accepting and understanding can be challenging. Um, and there are people that are going to walk away because uh, especially borderline personality disorder has a lot of stigma around it. And we're seen as very toxic people. Um, and we do have a tendency, like there's the clinginess and the um, being easily uh, triggered um, by things to trigger like self-harm or um, like splitting, which is essentially just um, black and white thinking and overgeneralizing and just essentially like having a bit of a, a freak out, I'll call it. Um, and that can make a person feel like they can't be themselves. And so that's why like setting boundaries and things like that is really important um, if you want to maintain healthy relationships. I would say even for neurotypical people, like people who aren't autistic or have ADHD or BPD or anything else, I would recommend having boundaries in your friendships and establishing those and having conversations and being like, this is what I need from a friendship. And this is what I need you to expect from me. And having standards. And I always say, like, unspoken expectations always go unmet. Like, you can't expect someone to read your mind. Um, and you can't be expected to read someone else's mind. So having that open communication and just talking about your feelings um and yeah like if my best friend or my favorite person um says something that hurts my feelings I express that to her um and I let her like I do let her know that I'm like offended or um hurt or whatever um but I still let her have those feelings like I'm not trying to talk her out of it which was what it can come off as sometimes. But we've had that conversation of, this is how I react when my feelings are hurt. This is what I'm gonna probably going to say or do. Um, and this is what it actually means. Um, 
but having those conversations is really crucial to having healthy friendships and yeah it's like so important so those are I guess kind of like tips um or what I do and how they affect it affects my friendships um yeah and it can affect them really negatively like in um I'll just tell one short story in high school I had multiple friendships that were really toxic um and we were almost be on again off again friendships and um all these different things and I think about how just like you can see in my behavior I was developing BPD and um I didn't know what to do with all those emotions and I couldn't handle it and there was no one there guiding me through it and I clearly was crying for help um but the cries went unanswered and now that I have the help that I need I'm able to be a functional and healthy friend um semi-functional most of the time um but yeah so that's what I have to say about that topic Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.